Okay, hello and welcome to our very first weekend virtual jug session and um, joining me, I think this is our 50, 50 second session maybe, um, joining me today um, uh, is, who shall I introduce first? Let's introduce Adita Gupta first, he's uh, uh, Mr. Aaron Gupta's uh, little boy and uh, Adita, how are you doing? Doing good, how are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, hey, very good. Thanks, and welcome, Arun. Again, this is probably your third, fourth, fourth, maybe fifth session of the virtual jerk. I think I stopped counting after two. So, <laughs> <laughs> excellent. So, so, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking, what you're going to be showing us today. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> um, me and my son, we have been doing these Minecraft modding workshops for over two years now, uh, as part of this effort for DevOps for Kids. Um, we have done these workshops all around the world. Um, literally all around the world. Um, this uh, workshop material is available and fully in open source. We have done these workshops at schools, at libraries, at office places, at corporate events, you know, and underprivileged kids anywhere. You know, I mean, literally all over. So our goal is not just to, you know, kids be players of Minecraft, but be producers, hopefully in the future, of a game like Minecraft. And also get their Java skills, you know, get a little bit ticked off to begin with. Okay, that sounds really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen so that folks can see how they can. Uh, here we go. So people can see how they can interact with us today. So hopefully you guys can see my screen now. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yeah, this is the virtual Java user group. We have regular meetings, and this meeting uh, today is getting started with Minecraft modding, as Arun uh, mentioned. So our two speakers we have here, Adita Gupta. Uh, you can follow Adita at Twitter, um, uh, at Adita underscore G. And Aaron Gupta is, of course, at Aaron Gupta, and you're welcome to, to follow both of those to hear, hear about lots of stuff, both Minecraft modding and, I'm sure, um, some interesting Red Hat JBoss uh, technologies as well. Um, so the virtual jug is proudly sponsored by Zero Turnaround and uh, a media partner of Rebel Labs. Um, it's probably not so uh, important to say this on this uh, session, but there are a couple of products that we have, JRebel and XRebel. Um, so mums and dads do check out that and uh, download some free trials. Um, but this is more important for this, for this session, is really how you interact with us. Um, if you are watching just, if you're watching live, um, on YouTube, you can interact with us on IRC either through the virtualjug.com um, or through uh, your free node IRC provider. And you just need to go to a channel uh, hash or pound virtual jug. If you're viewing live on virtualjug.com, there'll be a little widget next to this YouTube um, plug it next to the YouTube uh, video. Uh, and from there, you can actually log in, start chatting. And that's how you can ask questions to both Adita and Arun. So if you ask the questions live in IRC, which is just a kind of chat program, uh, we'll, I'll ask them direct. Um, yeah, please do share the group and the session afterwards. I'll make the links available so you can see the replays. Uh, and if you have any feedback on the session or the virtual jug as a whole, uh, feel free to ping us uh, on Twitter, at virtual jug, or myself directly, at SJ Maple. So, without further ado, then let me uh, find my other window. There we go. I'll pass uh, straight over to Adita and Arun, and let's start modding. All right, excellent. So, well, for, for, with that, um, well, uh, let's um, share our screen. And here we are. And uh, <clears throat> before we start, actually, uh, First thing that we would like to do, you know, actually, hold on for a second. I'm going to stop the screen sharing. Uh, before we really start, um, I want to say, um, not into the screen sharing. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, uh, uh, Denver. Um, so, DevOps for Kids is a nonprofit organization um, in the U.S. and around the world as well. I run the U.S. Uh, chapter, and there are in the U.S. there are about seven or eight chapters. I'm particularly excited today. Because the Denver chapter, you know, which is run by Matt Rabel, they are actually doing a meetup and they're watching this webinar hopefully live. So a very um, special hello to Matt Rabel and his team and his uh, kids over there who are hopefully watching us live. So I'm very excited that they're watching this and they will um, do their own Minecraft modding workshop with this. So that's kind of pretty cool. Awesome. So actually, if you wanted, to, uh, hey Matt, how you doing? <laughs> if you wanted to um, to join the session, just so we can see you guys as well, um, feel free to feel free to jump on uh, or, or 
drop me a, either a DM or something like that on Twitter, and I can send you the uh, the URL for this hangout, and we can uh, we can have a chat. Cheers. Yeah, cool. All right. So the way we start with Minecraft modding, you know, um, we give you a very simple URL: minecraftmodding.org. Literally, that one you one one website you need to remember if you do minecraftmodding.org um, all the instructions for uh, minecraft modding are available over here now in order to get started with minecraft modding um, you know when we started doing this about two years ago the instructions were very sparse uh, not a whole lot of was, was available but over a period of time i think we have you know built a very good set of instructions over here and a lot of people have been using it so what I will do is uh, I will uh, pass the baton to Aditya and who will explain basically what are the three components of Minecraft modding and how do you get started with that. Um, so namely, I'll quick a quick hint, which is uh, JDK, Eclipse, and Forge. He'll talk about those. And then he will show some of the mods that we will create here. Um, by all means, it will be hard to follow the instructions along. But since this video is recorded, you should be able to watch it again and again and hopefully follow along at your own pace. But the website is anyway available to you. Once again, the website is minecraftmodding.org and I will let Aditya explain exactly how the whole thing works. If you could, uh, if you could just uh, up to, if you could just screen share Arun as well, I think. Oh, uh, that's yeah, yeah, perfect, thank you. All right, so here we go. Once again, as I said, uh, we do minecraftmodding.org, you know, which is in my browser right now. If I hit that URL, you know, it automatically brings up here. Now, this is the GitHub repository for DevOps for Kids. Um, here, you see the workshop instructions for Minecraft. But by all means, you can click on workshops, and you can see there are a whole variety of workshops that are available over here. So by all means, you're not restricted to Minecraft. Although today's focus is going to be Minecraft here. So once again, I go back to the URL, say minecraftmodding.org, and it automatically brings me here. So with that, Aditya will explain the key components on how do you get started with Minecraft modding. So to start off with Minecraft modding, you need three things, Java, Eclipse, and Forge. Now, Java is like a Swiss Army knife. JDK. JDK is like. So Java, Eclipse, and Forge are the three components. Um, Java is the programming language, Eclipse is the tools, and Forge is one of the ways by which you do Minecraft modding. So what is what, what, how do you use Java, Aditya? So basically, Java is the language that, Java, that Minecraft is written in, and you need JDK to run Minecraft or do Minecraft modding. And then Eclipse is the tool that you use to edit all your mod files and run your mod in Minecraft. And Forge is the framework on which you build your mods. So you, you were talking about JDK being a Swiss Army knife. Tell me more about that. So it can do a whole bunch of things. It can let you run Java files. It can compile them. You can build them. You can run them on any type of operating system. And, and the way that works is because you know J JVM or JDK promises gives you the promise of Vora write once, run anywhere. So you can write program in Java using Eclipse. And then um, you can generate a jar file, which is basically generated by JDK. And you can get rolling with that. Once you have that jar file, that jar file would run on any operating system where a JVM is available, which is pretty much all the common operating systems. So once again, the key components are, scroll down, um, it basically are uh, JDK. and on the website, it gives you exact instructions on how do you and where do you download it from. So uh, show them, Aditya, how will you download JDK? So if I open this link here, and when you get to this link, you'll see this box here, Java SE Development Kit 8U51. First, you have to accept the license agreement, and then you can select whichever Java you need for your operating system. So for example, for this Mac, iMac, I would use the Mac OS X 64-bit. Now, this is where you might need help from your parents that is it a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine or what is my operating system? So make sure, kids, you are talking to your parents and getting the right JDK. It's very important to have the right JDK installed. And 
is sometimes easy to get confused over here. So if you look down here, it talks about demos and samples and downloads. That's not what you're interested in. Make sure you would go on the very first section where it says Java IC Development Kit, and that's the one that you're downloading. And also, if you already have Minecraft, that means you do have some version of JDK because you can't run without Java. Okay. Can we just grab that URL again? Sorry, was it Minecraft? Minecraftmodding.org. That's it, thank you. Yeah. Now, um, sometimes, you know, and well, if you're running Minecraft modding, you may not have JDK. You may have JRE, which is Java Runtime Environment. But if you want to do Minecraft modding, then you need JDK, which is Java Development Kit. So make sure, you know, you, uh, well, in all cases, you know, if you're not sure what do you have, it doesn't hurt downloading the latest JDK, downloading it, and installing it. So JDK is the first component. What's the next component? So the next one is Eclipse, which is called an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. Basically, it's like a really fancy text editor. You can edit your files. You can run them. You can look for bugs. So it's really useful when you're writing Java files for Minecraft modding. And how do we download that? And just click on the link. And here, you will download Eclipse IDE. Eclipse IDE for Java developers, this one here, after selecting your operating system in the little selecting box here. And you just click on the link, and then you click on download up here. So we already have it here, so I'm not going to download it right now. And but once again, you know, this is where you will need help, for example, for picking the right operating system. And as you can see on the right side, it talks about 32-bit, 64-bit. So make sure you know, kids are talking to the parents finding out what is the exact version they need to download. So that was the second tool. Now, the last tool we need is Forge. Forge is basically a framework that allows you to build mods for Minecraft. It looks, it adds ways you can look inside the Minecraft code and add stuff without actually changing the code. So again, the download is on here, just open it up. And it automatically downloads. And what if they want to download the latest file? You know, this is a slightly old, in the sense, like a few months old file. How would they download the latest file in that? So case? to download the latest one, just open up a new tab and go to files.minecraftforge.net. Again, that's files.minecraftforge.net. Here you'll see you can select your version, just select 1.8, and then in the download recommended box, just click on source which will lead you to an ad focus link that you can just skip the ad on, like this. Don't click on anything over here. Just wait for the skip ad button to show up here. It's very easy to get confused over here, because here it says the offer you clicked is no longer available. So you say, hey, wait, wait, what am I downloading and where am I going? So then you wait for the skip button to show, click on the skip button, and that will automatically download the thing for you, and which we have already done, so we're going to skip that part. So, so you, you've downloaded JDK, you've downloaded Eclipse, you've downloaded Forge. What else? So then the next thing you have to do is, right now, Forge isn't completely set up for Minecraft modding yet. First, you have to make a workspace, which Eclipse will use to put all your mods in. So you have to unzip the zip file you get from downloading Forge, and in it, give this command for Mac or this command for Windows, which will basically set up your workspace. And if it, if it works, then your output will show build successful. Now, once you've done that, you are pretty much ready to start Minecraft modding. And so what, what we do is basically, you know, if we look at the command prompt here, um, this is a direct, well, let me increase the font size first of all. Here, you know, you'll see a directory like this. There will be a build directory. There will be an Eclipse directory. You'll see all these files in there. More importantly, you will see .classpath, .gradle directories in there. And once those are there, that means that's a good sign that your build is successful and you are ready to um, get started with it. So JDK is there, Eclipse is there, Forge is there. We have got the Forge workspace ready. How do we open that in Eclipse now? So then you just open up Eclipse, we already have it open here. It'll, it'll show you a box kind of like this. 
which we've already done, but basically you just point it to your Forge for folder and then the Eclipse folder inside. So if I click on Browse, basically I'm just pointing it to this Eclipse folder inside of my Forge folder. So uh, you have you have this Forge directory which was downloaded zip which was downloaded yesterday. You built it, and within the Forge you have Eclipse directory, and that's what you point at. So you click on Open over there. And that directory shows up there, and then you click on OK. And that will launch your Eclipse. Now, the first sign that it's good is that you see this little Minecraft folder here. Make sure it has an arrow next to it. If I click on this arrow, you'll see a bunch of things pop up. There are a bunch of change logs and the thing you use to run your command, all that. And then here is the important stuff. This is sort of the main Java. This is where you're going to put all your mod files. So if I open this up, here you see column.example.examplemod. This is a mod that's already bundled with Forge, and it's a good way to check that your Minecraft works. So to check that it works, there's a green arrow here. Click on it, and make sure you don't click on the green arrow with the red luggage thing next to it, just the green arrow. Now, uh, in the Java parlance, that's called as a run button, or in Eclipse language, called as a run button. But you know, when we have given these workshops around the world, kids like to call it as a play button because that's what they're more familiar with. Now, one more thing I want to mention here: even though right now we are using Eclipse, but we have also given these workshops using NetBeans, and um, people have used IntelliJ as well. So, by no means, this workshop is restricted to Eclipse. NetBeans and IntelliJ are welcome IDEs. So in that sense, it's completely IDE agnostic. Let me just turn off the music for a second here. And then, now to check that everything is running correctly, there's a little console window right here. If you uh, double click on it, it'll open it up, make it huge. And then, here's the important part you should see this message here that says dirt block is tile.dirt. And here it'll say it's from com.example.example mod, the package we saw. And then it's from a Java file inside of there in the init in this in this line. So this method is printed by the example mod and it's basically just there to make sure your Minecraft works correctly. So I'll make this smaller again. So uh, show us where is this code, where is this line printed from in the example so mod? In this you know, it's a click on the arrow next to the com example example mod package. And open up example mod.java. And here you'll see there's a bunch of stuff, but first of all, this at mod thing here basically tells Forge that this class is a mod. And this is the name, it's example mod. And then it has a unique mod ID and a version that you don't need to worry about. And then here there's a method called init, which runs on the FML initialization event. Basically, this is before your game starts. And here the code says print a message saying dirt block and then dirt's unlocalized name which is tile.dirt. So tell me what, what is this line 14 which says event handler? So this event handler is basically telling Forge that this next method runs on a certain event, which in this case is FML initialization event. You may have seen that when I launched Minecraft there was a Mojang logo and then a bunch of red bars that were showing progress and a hammer and an anvil. This FML initialization event runs on, I think, step three of the red bars. Aha, uh -huh. cool. So everything in that sense in Minecraft is a uh, event. So give me some more examples of events that happen in the game. Well, like an event, maybe it could be an Enderman teleporting or a zombie getting killed or a creeper exploding, that kind of thing is an event. Okay, so all of those events are there. Yeah. And so potentially in our mods, we can look at those events and that's how we could mod the Minecraft game itself. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, very cool. So I think um, that's sort of the conclusion of how do you get started with Minecraft modding. You know, the basic steps, once again, if I, if I were to summarize, download JDK first, download Eclipse, NetBeans, or IntelliJ second, then download Forge third, get the Forge workspace ready. You know, the instructions are here for Eclipse, but by all means, you can use them for and NetBeans and IntelliJ, slightly different instructions. Um, and then you open it up and you run the game. So that's that's what it is about. So uh, Simon, what we want to check is if there are any questions so far in IRC. Um, there's a, uh, nothing, no, no main questions. One was asking uh, about which version of Forge, but it looked like that was 1.8. 
Um, one other thing, uh, if people want to increase the quality of their video, if you click on the cog just at the bottom right, uh, it, it really is dependent on your internet speed, so you can you can increase the quality there. Um, no questions about the about the session so far, apart from that Forge one. Also, if you wouldn't mind just increasing the font size on that Java file, that would probably be easier to read for people as well. Okay, we can increase it further. Cool. If anyone has does have any questions, um, feel free to put it in the IRC, and uh, and we can pose them straight away. There you okay. go. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, fourth question. Yeah. So the version of Minecraft that Forge runs is 1.8, and the version of Forge is just the recommended one because the latest one might have some bugs or something in it. Right. So if you go back to the browser, in the browser, if you go to that files.minecraftforge.net URL, and here you can see even the Minecraft version, even though it says Minecraft version, but really what it means is what Minecraft version compatible Forge you want to download. So for example, here, we are looking at 1.8. But you can go all the way down to 1.1 if you want to. Right. And then in that, now again, we are looking at download latest uh, and download recommended. So for example, download latest says 1502. And here it says 1450. So slight variation. But we have generally gone with the recommended one. And that seems to work very well. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see what do we need to create our mods. Uh, let's get modding. So again, all the modding instructions are on this uh, Minecraft modding.org link. So if you scroll up here, you'll see the table of contents. Now the first thing we're going to start with is the main file. Now the main file is basically Forge's entry point into your mods. It's like the example mod that we saw, but without the printing message. And it's got the at mod thing that tells it's a mod. It's got the mod ID and the version and the method. So to set up this new main file, we're going to have to go back to Eclipse. Here on right click on source main Java. And here what we're doing is creating a new package. So what is a package? Well, um, think about it. You know. If I were to give you a bucket of 1,000 crayons and say, go pick a red crayon from it, you will be like, you know, scrambling through the crayons and figuring out one. However, if I give you five buckets where the colors are neatly organized, and by the color, then I say, go pick a red crayon, then you will go to the bucket that is closest to red and give me a red crayon. Well, that's what packages are for. Packages are, you know, I mean, the game of Minecraft is hundreds of Java files, um, and so is Forge. Um, so the they are neatly organized in different buckets. Think of Java packages as buckets in which these classes can be organized. Um, we like to keep our code organized. <laughs> that is one of the basic requirements. You know, when you are building code, not just as a kid, but even as a professional developer, it's very, very important that you follow these design principles to keep your code usable and you know, so that others can understand it. So we're going to make a new package here. So click on, we're going to right click on source main Java. And you go to new package. Now it's going to ask for the name. The name is on the link, the website. And here you'll see org.devoxforkids.forge.mods. So copy this. And make sure you don't copy the dot after it, otherwise it won't work. So copy it. Go back to Eclipse. Paste it in. And then click on finish. Now, most of the time, your defaults would work. Wherein you know you just need to type in the required value and then you click on OK and then it goes and that's about it. So don't worry about changing any other values, only the required ones only. So then a package by itself doesn't do anything, it's just an empty package. Now we need to make a class to go in the package. So here again it says to make a new class in our new package. So right click on the package, go to new class. And here you'll see a bunch of options. Don't worry about any of them. Just go back to here. <coughs> Copy main mod. Just that. No dots. Nothing. And then go back here. Paste it in. Don't touch anything else. And finish. <coughs> so this here is just the default Java class. It has. It tells where the package is, and that's in org.devops.forge.mods, and it has the class name, and that's about it. So if you have never written a Java program so far, well, this is your first Java class. So you know, give a pat, pat yourself 
on the back. Uh, this is your first Java class, and that's how simple it is. You know, very simple, very nothing fancy. Don't worry about it. What the word pack public means, class means. Just get rolling. You know, let's get our mods working first, and then we'll try to explain some of the structure later. So now there's nothing in this class right now. I won't do anything at all. So now you have to go back to the link and get the code to put it in. So we'll go back to here. Copy all of the code from example one from package to this last curly brace here. And the, the important part here is you see the code that needs to be selected is already in that brown box or the gray box. So you pick only the code from that gray box. So then I just copy it, go back to here. And make sure before you paste it in that you delete all of the code already here. And then paste it in. <coughs> so here you'll have the exact same code as you have here. And it's just like the example mod, except it doesn't print out anything right now. So now your main file is good to go. But now we need to add the actual file that will do something in your mod. So back to here again. Scroll down to chat items. This will be our first mod for today, where we make it so that when you send a certain chat message, it will give you a stack of items. So here, if you say the word potato in a chat message, you get 64 potatoes. So in our, new pa in our package, we're going to have to make a file called chat items. So go back to here. Again, right click on your package and go to new class. And then back to here. Copy the name and no dot again. And then paste it in. And click finish. <coughs> and here we just have another empty Java class. So we're going to need to go back and add the code in. So here it's the same thing as before, except it's the code from example two. So copy the entire thing from package to the last curly brace. Delete everything here and paste it in. So basically what this is doing is this subscribe event also is like the event handler, but it was for different events. This event is a server chat event which happens when a player sends this app, app message, not necessarily on a server. Because Forge runs on an internal server, anything server pretty much happens on your Minecraft regularly. So if, it's just saying here, if the event's message contains the word potato, and since Java is case sensitive, it has to be all lowercase potato, then get the event's player and into their inventory, add a new item stack, and Let's make this bigger. <coughs> and the new item stack will contain potatoes and 64 of them. See, the other part over here is to understand you know, on line 12, for example, you see event message contains potato. That means it contains the word potato. You're, so it could be anywhere in the chat message if you have the word potato, this will work. And also, Aditya talked about Java being case sensitive. So here we are comparing exactly the word potato uh, or no, somewhere in the text. But we could have written this differently where it doesn't care about the context, but we have to tell Java explicitly about that. So let's see, you know, so we created the main mod, we created our mod file. How do we link the two together? So the last thing we need to do is tell Forge to put this on the event bus, which is basically a thing that tells all these event handler thing, all these event handler files to run. So for that, Scroll down here to example three, chat items registering, and copy this code here. And then this goes in your main file in this init method on line 15, and just paste it in here. Basically, it's taking the event bus from Minecraft Forge and registering chat items. So there are three steps that are required. First is the main mod, which is a one-time creation. But then for creating a new mod, you need to make a mod file and register that mod file into the main mod. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and just saying, this isn't the only event bus that you can use. There are other events on different event buses, but this is the one that's most commonly used. So now, if I close my other Minecraft and run this again, let's see if it works. It'll ask you if you want to save your resources before launching. I just take the always save and then say OK. Oh, 
Okay, so now you'll see, instead of saying four mods active as before, it says five mods. So let's take a look at that for a second. Here we have Minecraft Coder Pack, Forge Mod Loader, and Minecraft Forge. And these three are all, they all come with Minecraft Forge. Then here's the example mod that we looked at where it printed out the message. And then my mods are mod ID, and this is our mod. So now, if we make a new world. And our mod made it so we type in potato, we get potatoes. Let's see if it works. So now, let me get into a little bit of a lighter place. Okay, so then I open up my chat message, type in potato, and I got potatoes. If I type in, if I type in potatoes are cool, it still has the word potato in it. But if I type in potato in all caps, to so solve case sensitive, I get nothing. So that's that. Excellent. So <clears throat> here, you know, what you did, you know, if I see the code here, you know, if I look at the chat items, all you have shown is if I type the word potato, I get a stack of 64 potatoes. Am I restricted to potato or can I do other items here no, as well? No, you can do any item in the game. Uh, so if you select potato here, the one after items, and you get rid of it, but leave the dot, then there's a nice chicken eclipse. If you do control space, you'll see this little list of things pops up. These are basically all the items in Minecraft. And I can scroll through it. You have a vacation door, apple, arrow, baked potato, that kind of thing. And I can just start looking through it and see what kind of things I like. So, oh, here, find diamonds. You might want to give myself some diamonds. Or instead, what I can do, press control space and then start typing to narrow it down. So here I type in DIA and it's everything diamond. So I'll just go with some diamonds because everybody loves diamonds. So now when I type potato, I'm going to get a stack of 64 diamonds? Yeah. Oh my god, that would be so cool in real life. Yeah. Especially if diamonds are as big as in Minecraft. <laughs> so let's try this out. <clears throat> so this, um, every time you click on the play button, it's the files are now automatically saved. The JDK that we installed earlier is used by Eclipse to create the jar file and then it runs the game. Yeah. Okay. So back to our world. Now here if I type in potato, I get some diamonds. If I type in diamond, I get nothing. That doesn't really make any sense, does it? I'm getting diamonds from potatoes. So maybe let's go and fix that. So if I go back to Eclipse, now right here, the it's adding a stack of diamonds, but it's still checking whether the message contains potato. So you just get rid of potato, and make sure you make sure you leave the double quotes, and then just type in diamond. So before we test this code, you know, I want to ask a couple of questions here. What does this quotes indicate here in the game? So these quotes indicate a string value, which is basically like a text value in Java. So I can have a string value saying potato, diamond, Minecraft, whatever I wanted to say. In here. Okay, so you whatever text you are typing in the chat message is being compared over here. And how are you getting a 64 stack? So here in the new item stack, I'm saying items.diamond, which is an item, and then 64 is how many I'm getting. So what is the 64? It's a full stack of items. If you, if you, it's like if you have a hundred diamonds, they're not gonna be in one stack of a hundred. They're gonna be in a stack of sixty-four and then a stack of thirty-six. And this, in in, in, integer, in terms of Java, this is an integer variable. Yeah, an oh. integer meaning like anywhere from I think negative two billion to positive two billion. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So um, let's test it out. So once again, we close the game. So now I'll go back to my world. And here, typing a potato. 
It's nothing. Diamond gives me diamonds. Aha, uh -huh. that makes more sense now. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Let's go back to the website then. Now, if we look at the website and if we scroll down here, you know, for parents and you know, for kids who do not know the game, um, there are instructions on how you can do the gameplay. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I certainly don't know how to play the game yet. Um, for each mod you know, that we have here, uh, we have given different variations. So, for example, you can say, give me a stack of 64 potatoes when I type potato, give me a stack of 64 diamonds when I type diamond. So that's there. And other lots of variations as well. All right, so that's, that's sort of our very first mod. Um, uh, Simon, switching back to you for a second, any questions, any other questions that people have so far? Uh, we have one technical question actually, um, which is, let me go back to IRC. Um, so, um, Sir FF, is uh, and they're in a class watching the Minecraft session. That um, there a bunch of them are running through remote desktops, um, and when they try and actually run Minecraft, they're getting an, an exception L W J G L exception pixel format not accelerated. Any ideas around that? Yes, yes. We actually <laughs> we we were giving the workshop. I mean, well, we gave the Minecraft modding workshop at Red Hat Summit earlier this year, um, like about a couple of months back, and there. Um, the we were trying to use a Windows VM on top of a Fedora box. So sometimes what happens is, well, some, not sometimes, but most of the times, if you are using it in a virtualized environment, so LWJGL, it is lightweight Java gaming library, and it needs access to your um, hardware uh, device acceleration in order for Minecraft to run. But if you are running in a virtualized environment, sometimes those drivers don't talk to each other. Actually, most of the times, they don't talk to each other. Um, so uh, remote desktop virtualization could give those problems. Um, what I would recommend is Minecraft install, particularly the Minecraft modding install, is pretty lightweight. Um, so instead of running in a remote desktop, I would encourage installing the whole thing on your own machine, and that should be easier. OK. So there's no, uh, there's no workaround for right now for working in a remote environment? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Um, one other question um, from Fuki is um, where is the Minecraft API reference? Um, yeah, we, uh, we'll talk about that towards the end of the session as well. OK, perfect. Yeah, well, uh, just a short answer. Earlier, the f uh, Minecraft API, the Forge API, was always published on their website. Now you have to build the API, and then that's how you access the documents. And there are instructions on the Minecraft wiki, and we'll talk about that later. OK. And we have one final question from Jupiter um, uh, in, in Italy. Um, and uh, they'd like to know if, if we're going to show how to create a jar and put permanently, permanently in the Minecraft installation. I guess right now we're, we're, we're running with mods. We will talk about that, but uh, showing that would be a little time consuming, but we can definitely talk about it. Perfect. Thank, that's all we've got now. Thank you. All right. Let's get moving on it. Yeah. So, now that we made the first mod, we already have the main file. So the second mod will be a lot easier because all we need to do is make the mod file and register it. So this next one is called uh, Ender Dragon Spawner. Right now, dragon eggs are somewhat useless. They're just decorative and they annoy you and they teleport away as soon as you click on them. But this mod is going to make them a lot more useful because whenever you place one, it will spawn another Ender Dragon. So. To start off, again, we have to make a new class in our package. So right click on org DevOps for Kids Forge Mods and go to New Class. Then go back to the browser and copy the class name Dragon Spawner and paste it in here. Again, don't change any of the options and just click on Finish. Then back to here, copy all of example seven put it in here. So let's go to the code a bit. This happens on a place event. Basically, it's when you place a block. Now here I'm checking if the placed block is a dragon egg. If, if the block you placed was a dragon egg, then continue on. So this here will set the block to air because the, block, the egg should hatch and get destroyed. 
And here it'll make a new variable called dragon of the type entity dragon, which is an ender dragon, in the world that the block was placed. The dragon's location will be set to the block, and these last two numbers don't really matter. And then the world, the dragon will spawn, be spawned in the world. So one of the issues that we have seen people talk about is Java a good programming language to begin with? Now, Java is a little verbose language, but I think the beauty of the language is that way, you know, as just like Aditya was reading the code, you can read the code and understand it like English. Oh, yeah, I, I get the code. And you just change around some values, and then you click on the play button, and you're ready to roll. So I think I would certainly encourage for you, you don't have to learn Java in a conventional way where you write a main program and build a graphical design. You know Minecraft, just get rolling on Minecraft. You know, just get started with Minecraft modding. Why, why does you know, a public static hello world has to be your first Java example? Why can't Minecraft mod be your first Java lesson? That's sort of my request to parents to the worldwide Java community. So again, the last thing we need to do is register the mod file in our main file. So back to the browser and copy example eight and just put it in your main file right after the first one. So now here we're registering chat items and dragon spawner, both on the Minecraft Forge's event bus. So again, make sure you close your previous previous Minecraft, otherwise you might have a lot of lag. And then just click on the run button, the play button, whatever you want to call it. So I'll go back to my world here. And you can't get a dragon egg from your creative inventory. I can't just search it up. So you have to use the give command to give it to yourself. Well type in slash give. Then four assigns you a random player name. Here it's here it's player eight nine nine. But if you don't know it, just type in slash give, put a space, and press tab. That'll automatically put in your username. And then just type in dragon underscore egg. So here I have this purple and black dragon egg. And if I just go to the top of this hill here and place it down, there you go. I have an ender dragon. And now he's destroying everything. So the, the, the beauty or the power of Minecraft modding in that sense is, you know, you are literally modifying the game by adding new files. You know, so you can easily change that behavior. You can control it. You know, I have a friend's kid who, you know, who got so inspired by this mod that now he wanted to ride the Ender Dragon and he wanted to control the Ender Dragon. I haven't talked to him for a few days, but he was able to ride the Ender Dragon, but now he wants to steer it in a particular direction. And the way you would do that is you would look at which animals in the game are able to fly and then copy the code from there and see if that behavior can be incorporated on Ender Dragon. And you may be able to do it yourself, you know, but if by all means, ask your parents for a help, you know, and that's where I think it's a good bonding time with your kids as well. Another way you can also do it is where every kick, uh, it's called a living update event, you check for the player's angles, which way the player is facing, and you just set the Ender Dragon's angles to that. So whichever, whichever way you're facing, the Ender Dragon will go that way. All right, so in that sense, the, the recipe, so to say, for creating a Minecraft mod is where you have made a, made a, made a my mods file once, main mod file once, then you create a new Java file which has the actual mod content, and you register it in main mod. And for every mod, you make a new file, and you register it in main mods, and you're ready to go. So if you go back to the website, on the website, if we scroll down, you know, for each mod, we have a whole lot of variations. Um, we're not going to show all the mods. You know, you know the instructions on how to get the mods rolling. This particular one is about creeper spawn alert. What does it do, Aditya? So this one basically is kind of kind of useful where whenever a creeper spawns, it will tell you where exactly you said, uh, it'll just tell you that a creeper has spawned in a cool looking green message. 
And it'll tell everybody that a creeper has spawned, not just two the zeros. Let's talk about some other mods here. So, a lot of variation for creeper or creeper spawner. Are there any particular mods that you would like to show here? Yeah, there is one that I have been working on for a while now. But before that one, you know, over yeah, this one. Yeah, let's just go through this. Okay. This one, sharp snowballs, just basically turns all snowballs into arrows so you can actually hurt things with them. And then there's explosive snowballs, so it's a variation of it. Overpowered iron gloves makes them a lot better at killing things. Rainwater places water wherever entities walk when it's raining. TNT thunder, this is just rainwater, but it spawns TNT instead of water. Wall climber lets you just run into a wall and automatically start climbing up the wall. And uh, if we look at it, you know, here, all of their structures are very similar. They're all subscribe event. In this case, I'm looking at a player tick event. I'm looking at a living fall event. Um, and there are different behaviors that I'm adding to the game. Yes, this is Java syntax. You know, you're writing your Java code. Um, the focus is to get it rolling. And then, you know, um, th there are references that we'll share towards the end of the um, webinar on how you can learn it. Now, a particular one that I love and kids love here is Skeleton Walk. You want to show this that? This one's actually my personal favorite. So let me just quickly add this to our Eclipse workspace. Basically, what this does is it makes all skeletons, for some reason, hate each other and want to kill each other. And it's very funny to watch. So here, if I just quickly make, let well, me make sure we the Ender Dragons first. Then if I just quickly make a little platform here. This will be a little skeleton platform thing. And I will spawn some skeletons on it. And they all start off with random armor. The ones with full diamond armor are usually the ones that survive. And here you can see they're all shooting arrows at each other. It's just really funny to watch. It's one that shoots one and then it falls off the cliff. And there went one right now. And there goes another one. And another one. This guy here is probably going to be pretty good. So there's lots of mods you can make. Besides this, there's also like new enchantments, uh, fast bows here. And there's even a section on sharing your mods. Basically, <clears throat> you made a cool mod and you want to share it with your friends. You're going to be like, I made this cool mod. So I am like cool. So you know, it has instructions around you can share your mods. Um, you can build it into a jar file and then follow the instructions on the Minecraft Forge wiki on how to install it in your Minecraft. Now this is also related to what question that was asked earlier in the session that how can I share my mods? So this is exactly how you will um, Create a jar file of the mods that you will create. Grab the bragging rights and tell your friends, hey, I built this cool mod and you know you show it to them. So there's a mod that you have been working on, Aditya, which is, and I, and I won't say the name, but you want to show that mod and then we will uh, talk about something else a little bit later. Yeah, let me just go ahead and show that. <coughs> so, I'll run this and then I will show you what it is. Oh, actually, it should probably be better if I start off in a new world.
So this is the one I've been working on for the last probably month and a half or so. And as soon as it loads, right. So if I open, if I go here, these are all the regular Minecraft creative tabs, so I can go over here. And here's all of my stuff. So I have like new kinds of bones because the mod is called Spooky Scary Skeletons. And then I have new, more blocks, and I have tools and swords and new bows and guns and armor and miscellaneous things and some food. So you're not just restricted to, you know, changing the behavior of an existing game. Here you have added a whole bunch of new tabs, and within those tabs, a whole bunch of new blocks and items and swords and armors and, and stuff. And even more, this is my favorite part, is I can make a skeleton cow. This is a new mob that I added. Or, uh, let's see if this works. A jelly skull. It's like a slime, but with a skull inside. And you can see his face is just a, a skull. It's funny looking. <laughs> then I can even go to my own dimension with a dimensional gateway and a key. So this is a new dimension that you made in the game, and yeah. that's again using Forge Mars. With a new biome, and it even spawns the jelly skulls and the skeleton. Here's, here's a population of skeleton cows right here. And it's made completely of soul sand and a new block that I added. But yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with Forge. That is super cool. Now, um, if people want to try out this code, the spooky scary skeleton, how would they look at it? So, I haven't made a shorter link yet, but I probably should. But for now, you can go to this link here. So, it's github.com slash the one that's me, slash spooky scary skeletons mod slash releases. I haven't added the release with the new mods, mods yet. I'm going to do that today. But the last release has the new dimension and the biome or whatever. And you can download any of the releases that you want. So there have been a few releases made to it. So if you look at the top one here, you know, we have the comment, comment notifications and what has changed. Um, effectively, for you to get started would be, you know, you download this jar file and follow the usual instructions that we explained earlier. So imagine you have this jar file and then you have how do you use Minecraft Launcher to install that jar file as part of your um, regular Minecraft game. So you can have this spooky scary skeleton mod installed in there. And in the full open source spirit, and if we talk about it, if you look at if you click on this spooky scary skeletons mod, the entire source code for that is available here as well. So you can look at it, all the creative tab, dimensions, enchantments, guns, tools. All the source code is available here. So yeah, that's my mod. So last thing, last thing we're gonna talk about is the book that uh, my dad and I wrote on Minecraft modding. So here it is with a lizard on top, I guess. And basically, it's a family-friendly guide to building web mods in Java. And on there we have about two dozen mods that are different from these ones, and we even have a new block and new item. So if I click on the link here, and I will increase the font here. Um, so either you can read it here, you know, you can, it'll show you the entire table of contents. Um, the setup part, which we did already, you know, block break message, you know, all sorts of explosions. How do you make bigger TNT explosions? Um, how do you do a wall climbing golems? How do you create new commands, new blocks, new entities, recipes, textures? All of that is in there. Um, well, this is the O'Reilly website, but I can also go to Amazon. And on Amazon, I can say, show me Minecraft modding with Forge. And if I search for that book, that book comes right here. Um, and uh, you can buy this from Amazon as well. Um, recently, we have seen some good reviews as well. Um, one of the particular ones that I would like to highlight here is um, someone with no background coding could get going creating Minecraft mods with this book. So this book is actually targeted at um, eight-year-old, nine-year-old kids who have never programmed, who have no programming or logical, uh, well, logical thinking probably is there, but no programming experience at all, at all, no syntax at all. So this book exactly gets into that job where it starts coaching you that experience. People have been using this book for um, uh, in the middle school as a curriculum. 
so which is kind of cool because it gets them started with uh, TNT, uh, Minecraft modding. So um, we are pretty excited. I, I think this is a unique opportunity. As I was saying earlier, Minecraft, uh, if you want to get started with Java programming for your kids, and believe me, there are close to 10 million developers. Um, so if you want to get started with Minecraft modding or, or Java programming, you don't have to look at uh, essentially um, a hello world. Your first Java program could be a Minecraft mod very easily. Last but not the least, we also have a video that we created. Uh, here is the QR code for that. So if I make the window slightly smaller, uh, if you scan this QR code, it will take you to a URL or there's a link here as well. So if I go to that URL here, you can order this video course. You know, all the mods that we just explained, it gives you very close and detailed instruction with full code explanation of the mods that are on this website on how you can get them ready. So you can download, you know, you can purchase this course. Um, as you can see, it's you know, on a 50% discount right now. Um, so by all means, um, that's something that you may worth consider as well. Um, what else? Um, I think that's about the end of it. So we are just at the top of the hour. We are gonna do stop the screen share. And we are ready, Simon. Awesome. Well, that was a really, really great session. Thank you. Um, if anyone's got any uh, any final questions, please do drop them into the chat. Um, so I've put also the links to the um, to the to the book in the chat. Um, so I don't think we have any questions at the moment. Um, just a just a quick question: How long does it? How long would you say, on average, it takes? Uh, for for a kid who hasn't had any experience at all to to really become um, uh, kind of good at, at, at writing their own mods, does it is it something that they need to do over weeks and months, or is it something they can f get fairly comfortable with soon? Well, I mean, I'll give you an idea. So um, our print copy of the book came out about three to four weeks after the digital copy. And by the time the print copy came up, there were people who were reading eighth or ninth chapter of the book, and they were, they were giving us feedback on that. So within three weeks, you now, and that's the whole purpose of the book. We want them to be fluent. We want them, you know, it's like a storytelling. You just sit and read it by yourself, or read it with your dad or mom, and then read it like a story, and just boom, 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 keep moving. And the book or the website, in that sense, are sort of the basic building blocks. Once you understand that, um, in, in the website, of course, it's a predefined set of mods. But in the book, we give a lot of different ideas that, oh, you learn a command now. How about you try these three different commands on your own? So we give a lot of ideas in that sense where kids should be hopefully feel inspired and excited to try out those commands. OK, awesome. So no, no other questions right now in the, in the session. So I'm just going to post in. Uh, the replay to the session into IRC. So, uh, so if anyone wants to um, look through that, listen, hear, hear this session again, uh, two or three times maybe, whatever it's, whatever you need, um, feel free to uh, to go to that. Um, one other interesting thing is uh, I noticed one of my colleagues uh, put in a post recently about using variable for uh, for Minecraft I don't know if you've had a had a try at that I'm not sure that's not something that is kind of like a supported plugin or anything like that so I'm not sure how good it is but um, that for for mums and dads who get bored with the uh, with the reloads and the and the rebuilding that might be that might be useful I don't know if you've tried that yet yeah yeah, yeah. so Adam Koblenz actually you know sent me that article that's something I need to try as well so now if you recall during the eclipse, you know, when we were writing the mod, we had to run the program again, save the file again, and then start the game all over again. So that could, you know, I mean, that's an additional step. So something that I've been thinking about is how can I incorporate JRebel as part of the Minecraft modding workshops across the world as well. That way, the kids, you know, they say, "Hey, I just save it, and my mod is already available in the game of uh, Minecraft." So I, I think that would be a very significant change. I you know, we have only 24 hours. I wish I have 48 hours, so I would have tried it sooner. But yes, that's on on my list to do. Awesome. So uh, so it just leaves me to say a massive thank you to uh, to both uh, Adita and Arun. Thanks for joining, um, and uh, thank you everyone for 
attending. And I hope uh, I hope you guys had fun in Denver um, and all around the world. If you do have any further questions, where should people uh, people contact you both on on Twitter or? Yeah, t t t Twitter is the best mechanism, um, or uh, uh, post a comment you know, anywhere on the website as well. Okay, perfect. So thanks very much, everyone, and uh, we'll have an interview with Adita and Arun straight after this. Um, so happy Minecraft modding and uh, enjoy the rest of your days. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you, everybody, guys. Bye bye.